Graduates, I am pleased to welcome you and your family and friends to today's virtual commencement celebration. While I wish we could gather in person for our traditional commencement festivities, I am pleased to be with you virtually to celebrate our graduates and their achievements, and in particular, to recognize the resolve and determination. Benjamin Disraeli, the 19th century British statesman and novelist, once said, there is no education like adversity. Graduates, you learned this lesson firsthand and over the last year. In the midst of a global pandemic, you have successfully navigated the rigors of higher education and have emerged stronger and wiser and better equipped to tackle the complex issues of our world. Some of you, while pursuing your degrees, also were on the front lines of the pandemic serving as first responders or as healthcare professionals. You are the true heroes of this pandemic, and we are enormously grateful to you for your devoted service. One such individual, Victoria Fidak, accepts her master's degree in emergency management. She had been a certified EMT only for a few months when the pandemic started. She credits the support she received from her classmates and professors for helping her to persevere. She will continue to help protect the public from COVID-19 as she was recently named the Public Health Emergency Preparedness Coordinator for the Quinnipiac Valley Health District. Another graduate, Sophia Walsh, who accepts her Master of Healthcare Administration, helped ensure COVID-19 testing for associates and implemented contact tracing procedures as part of her internship at Benchmark Senior Living in Hamden. Passionate about working with residents who suffer from dementia, she now works as program coordinator for the facility's memory care community. What has been most inspiring is how our graduates embrace the challenge of learning and working in ways many of us never imagined, and how they persevered and succeeded under the most trying circumstances. Take Emily Morgesi a member of our honors program, who also earned her bachelor's degree in only 3.5 years. She is excited to dedicate her life to sharing her passion for science with others. A biology major, she served as a microbiology lab assistant, conducted extensive field research, and served as the president of the Tri Beta Biology Honor Society. She is currently applying to graduate programs in biology education. And there is Julian LaRusso, who had already earned two master's degrees, including one in mechanical engineering from MIT, and worked for more than 40 years as an engineer before returning to the classroom to pursue a master's degree in emergency management. As part of his thesis, he researched the potential impact an electromagnetic pulse would have on our nation's critical infrastructure including transportation systems. He also examined ways to reduce risks for vehicles delivering emergency services and supplies to the public in the aftermath of such an attack. His commitment to being a lifelong learner truly is an inspiration. These are but a few stories of those who excelled in and out of the classroom. Each of our graduates should take great pride. As our future leaders graduates, you each have a responsibility one that I encourage you to take very seriously, to be socially conscious, empathetic, and caring individuals. I am confident that you will make your mark on society. As Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I challenge you to be innovators and to have an impact beyond what any of us can envision. Use the knowledge you acquired and the experiences you gained to approach all of your future endeavors with a conviction to leave this planet better than it is today for future generations. I hope that as you begin the next chapter in your lives that you will remain connected to your alma mater and that you will take great pride in a lifelong affiliation with the university. What gives me great hope is that like the graduates who came before you, you are equipped with the skills to address the issues that confront us and the problems that we as a society will face in the future. 
I offer you my heartfelt congratulations and my best wishes for wherever life takes you. Above all, I hope you will never forget, once a charger, always a charger. I am now pleased to introduce Daniel Kwiatkowski, who is a finance major and will offer remarks on behalf of the undergraduate student body. Class of fall 2020, we made it, and what a journey it has been. Before I go on any further, I would like to note that I have no idea how in the world I got chosen to be a speaker at today's graduation. I guess all those ramen noodle meals, early morning classes, hours spent looking for parking on campus, and emails asking professors for deadline extensions really paid off. However, when I was asked to write this speech about three weeks ago, I couldn't be more appreciative of the opportunity, and I knew I couldn't let everyone at graduation down. So, just like any term paper or project we've had an entire semester to work on, I got right to the drawing board, and I started working on it the night before it was due. I drank four Red Bulls, stayed up all night, hit a mental wall three times, submitted my speech 30 seconds before the deadline, and subsequently ruined my sleep schedule for the entire week. I know this is not the picture we all had in our minds when we thought of our big college graduations three plus years ago as first year students. None of us thought we would be in the middle of a global pandemic and wearing masks everywhere we go. None of us thought we would be taking classes on Zoom for the last semester and a half. None of us thought we would be watching our graduation from a TV or a laptop. However, while we might not have pictured it this way, we did picture graduating with a hard earned degree and that's exactly what we all accomplished. Our time at the University of New Haven has helped us grow and learn. Grow as students, friends, interns, leaders, teammates, researchers, and so much more. And learn about ourselves, who we are, and who we want to be in the future. One of the most important things I learned as an undergraduate here at University of New Haven, especially over the last year, is to never take anything for granted and to appreciate all the small things in life. Let's appreciate that we can graduate from the comfort of our homes with our loved ones right by our sides. Let's appreciate that we don't have to find parking on campus because that is one of life's most difficult tasks. Let's appreciate all the memories we've made during our time here. And finally, my fellow graduates, appreciate all the work you have done to get those bachelor's and master's degrees. I can sit here and try and think of a clever, motivational quote to end off on and pretend I know what I'm doing or I'm talking about, but truth is, I know just about motivation as a two-year-old, but what I do know is that we are all here to embark on a journey of our lifetimes and start writing a brand new chapter of our lives. To those graduates that know exactly what their next step is, congratulations. We have worked hard for this moment and the fruits of your lab labor will soon begin to manifest. To those many graduates who may not know exactly what you want to do, it's okay. Your journey is just beginning, so enjoy and trust the process and in due time your purpose will become clear. Thank you, and congratulations once again, Fall Class of 2020. Thank you, Daniel. I would now like to welcome Rose Keithen, the President of the Graduate Student Council, who is graduating with a Master's of Business Administration and will offer remarks on behalf of the graduate student body. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak today. As a student body and as a community over the past year, we have endured insurmountable odds, including the loss of financial stability, the inability to see friends and family, and even the heartbreaking loss of loved ones. Despite all this, we are still here fighting for our education. We have graduates who have flown over 24 hours to obtain their degree. We have graduates that work full time while supporting a family. And we have graduates that have moved here to be in a more accepting community. And we also have graduates who have lost loved ones here today from COVID-19. And yet again, day in and day out, the students at the University of New Haven continue to push ahead, become resourceful, and find new ways to achieve their goals. I've seen firsthand an adaption to a new set of norms that entrusts our future to inventive scholars like ourselves. Professor DeGos took these values and directly used them in our online classroom. On days where the last thing I wanted to do was spend three hours on Zoom and just hide behind my screen, he encouraged anyone with their camera off to engage in the class. Because of his new set of norms, he said in our Zoom classroom, my education wasn't jeopardized. The UNH community is no different, continually evolving to set new standards for high quality education 
We motivate ourselves to understand the material despite all the opposing forces surrounding us each day. COVID-19 is just another hurdle our community will overcome and adapt to. But it has also given us great valuable lessons on experiences that we may have never learned without it. Because of this past year, it was our community that taught me the difference between hearing someone and actively listening to them. I implore you after graduation to continue to express your concerns. Stand up against any wrongs, ask for help, and most importantly, make your voices heard. Hard times are undoubtedly upon us, but it is up to us to make the most of it and move forward. Best put by Vivian Green, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning how to dance in the rain. Thank you and good luck to our new graduates. I now have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker, Dr. Susan Frampton. The president of Plaintree International, a leading nonprofit that works with organizations around the world to promote patient-centered care as a model for improving the quality of health care. Dr. Frampton has been named by Health Leaders Magazine as one of 20 people who make health care better. A medical anthropologist, she is the vice chair of the World Health Organization's Health Promoting Hospitals Network Governance Board. In 2019, the university's School of Health Sciences became one of the first in the United States to pursue higher education certification from Plaintree International. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Susan Frampton. Thank you, President Kaplan. This is such a gift, and it's with real pleasure that I accept this honorary doctorate, not only for myself, but on behalf of so many of my colleagues over the years who have worked alongside me to advocate for the rights of patients and their families and caregivers. I'm even more honored to be with all of you for this milestone in your personal and professional journeys. For a ceremony that celebrates your hard work and accomplishments, and while we would all prefer to be together in person for this celebration, if there's one thing we've learned over the past year, it's been the importance of being flexible and creative in how we continue to connect with one another in safe and responsible ways. But this hasn't been easy. In fact, when I think of each of you and the challenge of completing this milestone in your education, it strikes me that you're graduating during a truly unprecedented moment in history a once in a lifetime or perhaps a once in many lifetimes crossroad that not only our country but the world around us finds itself at. You concluded your studies in a year that many would say has been the worst year ever. How many times have we heard our friends and family say, I can't wait for 2020 to be over? But think about this. You will never forget this year or this moment in time. You will tell your children and grandchildren about the year 2020, about a deadly pandemic that spread to every corner of our planet, that required people to wear masks wherever they went. You'll describe to them just how far six feet of social distance can feel, what Zoom fatigue meant, and how weary everyone grew of the reminder, you're on mute. You'll tell them about this virtual commencement ceremony, made necessary just to keep everyone safe, and about the perfect storm that our nation was going through the year that you finished your degree. Not only a pandemic that has claimed hundreds of thousands of our families and friends, but a social justice uprising seeking recognition of hundreds of thousands of other lives that have been impacted through the years based on the inequities woven through our country's institutions and policies. A year in which our country alone racked up a record number of extreme weather events from droughts and wildfires to cyclones and hurricanes, 16 in total, compared to the 30 year average of six to seven annual events. And to top it all off, perhaps the most divisive presidential election the United States has experienced since Lincoln faced off against General George McClellan in 1864. No, this has not been an easy time. This has not been an easy year. And I imagine you'll not likely forget 2020 anytime soon. But through all of this, with these incredible challenges swirling around you, you somehow stay focused. 
you stayed committed to your studies and to completing your degree so that you can go out into this world more equipped and ready to use what you've learned to make this a better place. You are an awesome, resilient group of human beings. Your families must be so proud of each of you. And now you're expected to chart your course for what we all hope will be a better future at this time of continuing challenge and uncertainty. More will be asked of you than other graduating classes, because while there is a light at the end of this tunnel we find ourselves in, we're still in the tunnel. As the COVID-19 virus continues to fill our hospitals, the divisiveness of our national politics continues to impact the workings of our democracy. Social unrest continues to rock many of our communities and climate change continues to disturb the very planetary systems we rely on for a healthy, sustainable future. We will need your energy and your light to pull our country through this tunnel and out the other end because we cannot rely on the generations that created many of these problems to solve them. We will need to look to you. And so today I appeal to you, to your inner drive and dedication, the very things that have gotten you to where you are today, to this singular achievement that against all the odds, you've persevered and made happen. I appeal to your energy, your resilience, and I ask that you not give in to fear not give in to anger or distrust at a time when it would be understandable to feel these things. I ask that you look ahead for inspiration instead. Can you guess what one of the first things is that people do when they're invited to give a commencement address? They go online and they look at the most inspirational quotes of all time to sprinkle into their comments at just the right point. And so yes, I did that too. And I chose this one that I thought was relevant, particularly at this moment. Don't wish it were easier. Don't wish it were easier. Easier isn't necessarily better. And easier doesn't necessarily bring out the best in people. And besides, we are not living in easy times now anyway. So we all may as well deal with the fact that this is a time that demands more of each of us. This is an unprecedented time that challenges each of us to focus not on those things we can't do because of present circumstances, but on those things we can do. Some of you may be familiar with one of Gandhi's often quoted sayings, be the change you want to see in the world. This is your opportunity to be a force for positive change when the world needs that more than ever. I do believe in the power of one person to change the world. Maybe not necessarily on a global scale always like a Gandhi, but each of us, each of you, has an unusual opportunity to be a force for good in a world that desperately needs you and your contributions. You may be wondering, how do I bring out my inner Gandhi? Look around you and you'll find both inspiration and a call for compassion. Look to our fellow citizens who have literally put their lives on the line, including over 1,500 healthcare workers who died this past year as they sought to provide care to patients with COVID-19 before we fully understood how to protect them from the virus. They too faced unimaginable situations and remained committed to the greater good to their patients, even when it put them at significant risk. They are an inspiration. And look to the families of coronavirus victims with compassion, many of whom have had to deal with the grief of not being at the side of loved ones in hospitals and nursing homes in their final days and hours unable to provide the simple comfort that the presence of a familiar human being brings, struggling now to deal with such loss and continue on with their lives. Look to the many COVID positive patients who chose to forego life-sustaining care in exchange for the healing presence of their families, a decision no one should ever have to make. But these are unprecedented times that have required incredibly difficult choices. I know that some of you have completed degrees in the health sciences, and you will have opportunities to contribute your skills and your knowledge to healing, to the health and well-being of your friends, families, and communities. And if you're looking for additional inspiration, look to those who have used their First Amendment right to free speech thoughtfully and responsibly, finding constructive ways to make their voices heard supporting needed social change as they strive to create a more fair, 
just and equitable society that extends the same rights and opportunities to everyone, regardless of their race, gender, or national origin. I know that many of you have completed degrees in criminal justice, in forensic science. Your knowledge and expertise will be needed more than ever as our nation strives to chart a course for the future. You will have opportunities to make a difference, to right wrongs, to help us find a path to what our Declaration of Independence set out as a core aspiration of the experiment that became the United States, that all people are created equal, that they are endowed with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if you're looking for still more inspiration, look to the innovators who are finding ways to protect both the health of our planet and the strength of our economies, who are pioneering new approaches to renewable technologies and redefining what it means to be a good corporate citizen. Some of you have completed degrees in engineering and in business and you will have opportunities to find new ways to help the world run as efficiently, effectively, responsibly, and cleanly as possible. And finally, if you're looking for inspiration, look to the record-breaking 160 million Americans who voted in 2020. 22 million more than just four years earlier and the largest number in the history of our presidential elections. I know that some of you have completed degrees in national security, in psychology, and you'll have opportunities to influence the way our country works in the future, to ensure that our society is safe, that our democracy survives and thrives, and that people have access to factual information so that they may make informed decisions. So yes, this past year has been a whirlwind at times very sad, very challenging, sometimes disturbing, and yes, some of us have flirted with the idea of moving to Canada, but it's also been an opportunity to step up and be heard, to step up and be helpful, to step up and be counted. And so you each now have both the opportunity and responsibility to write the next chapter, not only for yourself as an individual, but also for our country as we look to our collective future. You can stay in the tunnel of gloom, or you can choose to be a force for positive change. The final line of one of my all-time favorite poems by Mary Oliver asks, what will you do with this one wild and beautiful life? You are embarking on the next chapter of your one wild and beautiful life. You get to decide how you spend your precious time. Spend it well, spend it wisely, have the courage to pursue your dreams, even in the face of adversity even at one of the most difficult times in recent history. Lend your talents and your energy and your gifts to making 2021 and beyond memorable for the progress we make in ending this pandemic, for the progress we make to improve equity and social justice, and for finding creative ways to better care for our planet and for one another. And so today I join your families and friends in congratulating you for your educational accomplishment we're depending on you to go out into the world and help make things better. And for just a little while longer to wear your mask while you do that. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, for your thought provoking and poignant remarks. It is now my privilege to present you with an honorary degree. Susan Frampton, visionary healthcare leader, international expert on person-centered care, passionate patient rights activist. As a medical anthropologist, you have dedicated your life to implementing comprehensive patient-centered models of care as a way to improve the quality of health care. The author of three editions of Putting Patients First, Best Practices in Patient-Centered Care, you have developed a critical resource that the founder of a leading international health care charity described as a way to revolutionize revolutionize the work of healthcare professionals and provide far more satisfaction in their work. As the president of Plain Tree International for more than 20 years, you have helped the first patient-centered care organization in the U.S. create a global model for enriching and strengthening healthcare practices. Your work as chair of the National Academy of Medicine led to a groundbreaking framework for patient and family-engaged care. You put it best when you say, at heart, we are people caring for people. Through your advocacy, 
Tracy, you truly are an exemplary role model for our students. Susan Frampton, in recognition of your leadership in enriching and transforming how healthcare is delivered, the University of New Haven is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Arts and Letters, honoris causa. Susan Frampton, by virtue of the authority vested in me by our Board of Governors, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. Congratulations. It is now my privilege to present retired Colonel Merrill Tengestall with an honorary degree. Merrill Tengestall, trailblazing pilot, decorated military officer, inspirational leader. You have said you were raised to believe there are no limits on what you could accomplish. In every way, you have embraced this mindset. As a student at the University of New Haven in the early 1990s, you were one of only three women in your graduating class to earn a degree in electrical engineering. Following missions in the Middle East, South America, and the Caribbean, and serving as an instructor pilot, you joined the Air Force's U-2 program and took on a courageous new challenge. You became the first and only African-American woman to fly the U-2 spy plane, a high-altitude aircraft used for reconnaissance missions that has been called the most difficult plane in the world to fly. I wanted to challenge myself in ways that had never been done, you said. Don't let anyone tell you that it's too hard. You truly exemplify excellence and empower others to accomplish more than they ever thought possible. Meryl Tengestal, in recognition of your pioneering career and the far-reaching impact you have had in helping others soar to new heights, the University of New Haven is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Engineering Honoris Causa. Colonel Merrill Tangestell, by virtue of the authority vested in me by our Board of Governors, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Engineering Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, President Kaplan, Susan, the graduates. I am deeply honored and moved by such a wonderful gesture of an honorary doctorate degree in engineering by a university that has done so much for me in helping me shape my career. When I was asked to give a few words, I'll be honest, I struggled to find something meaningful to say because it's been one hell of a year. A year that has strained every facet of our lives. From the global effects of COVID to domestic events that have made people take to the streets in frustration, anger, and fear. To a 2020 election that still has all of us shaking our heads. I can understand why some of us feel lost, helpless, and incredibly uncertain of what the future may hold. I'm sure our situation will get better, but I'm not able to tell you when that may occur. What I can tell you is all these things that are happening to us have allowed us to become more introspective and realize that we cannot continue on the current trajectory and be successful. These sequences of events have created an appetite of change across the world and for each of us. And that's where you come in as an individual with a fresh perspective, creative ideas, and new skill sets cultivated by your time at UNH. I remember being pushed by my mentor, the late Professor Morrison, to be better than I thought I was. He always challenged me to set my own course and not drift upon the waves. So I challenge you in this dynamic environment to help shape a positive future by creating innovative solutions to help others thrive during this period. You may feel that you're not ready for this, but trust me, you are. Sitting around hoping things will change for the better is not a good strategy. Using the determination and drive that help you succeed here at UNH will bring that challenge and hope to others through whatever endeavors you choose as your life's passion. At first, I doubted that I could make much of an impact. However, I found that as long as I kept moving along the path, the act in itself created change, hope, and opportunity, not only for myself, but for others around me. And this is what I want for you. So thank you very much for a moment to share my thoughts with you. I'm sure you will continue to carry on to traditions of UNH. Thank you, Merrill. You truly are an inspiration for our students. 
We will now hear from the deans of our academic colleges who will present the individual candidates for their degrees. Thank you, President Kaplan. Congratulations to all the graduates from the College of Arts and Sciences. We have all shared a strange year. It's spooky how different the campus is with so many things being done virtually. You have all adapted and thrived despite the limitations of the COVID crisis. You have successfully navigated all the different types of classes, flex, hybrid, remote, and online. You even learned how to use co-verified and tolerated repeated COVID testing. Through it all, you and your faculty advisors and instructors have managed to stay in touch and make sure you stayed on track and thus reached this important milestone, graduation. Recently, I was talking to one of our undergraduate environmental science majors. She had started out in a different program, but soon discovered it wasn't right for her. One of the strengths of the university is our ability to help students find the right path. She told me about how happy she was to have found a home in that program. She shared how great her classes were and how supportive the faculty were. The program allowed her to find something she loved and will be continuing into graduate school. The faculty helped all along the way from making the transition easier to helping her find the best graduate program for her. I know this type of story is repeated in all the programs in the College of Arts and Sciences. I hope you share in the pride that I have in your accomplishments. You've worked very hard to get to this point, growing in your area of study, but just as importantly, growing as a person. You have many accomplishments to be proud of, and I share your pride. You have navigated the trials and tribulations of the COVID pandemic successfully. As you go forth, I anticipate that you will continue to be a source of pride for the university. I have deep gratitude to, for you for what you've brought to the university community. You have participated in a wide variety of organizations from the band to student government, from the radio station to mock trial, and many others. I'm grateful for your leadership and service to the community and to the service of learning courses. I hope these are lessons that extend beyond the classroom and into the rest of your life. They are qualities that will make you truly successful as an individual. Finally, I am hopeful that you will find fulfillment in your life after the university, in your chosen profession, in your family life, and in your community. I believe we have provided you with skills that you will need to proceed through whatever employment opportunities and challenges you face. That will not, however, be all you make of your life. Your family and friends, many of which are likely also from the university, are going to be critical to your happiness and fulfillment. Likewise, I hope you will find service to your community, professional and social, as a third part of a fulfilling life. Once again, I am very proud of you, grateful for what you have done, and hopeful for your future. Congratulations on being graduates of the University of New Haven College of Arts and Sciences. You will always have a home here, and I hope you will stay in touch with your advisors and instructors. And now we will have greetings from a few of our college faculty. Hi, I'm Bruce Barber, the general manager of 88.7 WNHU, our award-winning campus radio station. And on behalf of the Department of Communication, Film, and Media Studies, I'd like to share with you our heartfelt congratulations on this momentous occasion. Now, as you know, here at the University of New Haven, we put our students first. So we share with you and your families the sense of pride you feel on this special day. It has truly been an honor to work with you to ensure your future success in this ever-changing world. 
So while this marks the close of an important chapter in your life, let me make you a promise that we will continue to be here for you in whatever way you need us. With a tip of the hat to the film concentration, and in the words of Rick Blaine in the movie Casablanca, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. So enjoy the day, don't be a stranger, and go Chargers. Thank you for those greetings. Mr. President, as Interim Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, I have the pleasure of presenting the individual candidates for their degrees. Nawaf Abdulaziz Al Saidan. I just want to say thank you to my family and everyone who supported me. I'm so proud of myself. I did it. 2020. Thank you. Love you, America. Clermont Branchio. Hi, I just want to say thank you to my family, my friends, and everybody who supported me during these three and a half years. Um, we did it! Kayla Kushian Pranzaforte. Mackenzie Rose Conroy. Cum Laude. Cameron R. Fonti. Lindsay Olivia Guild. Cum Laude. Christine Hall. Cum Laude. Carrie Anna Kingsley, cum laude. Madeline Ryan Crispin, magna cum laude. Michael Stephen Lenzero. Felipa Isabel Andrade Martins, summa cum laude. Dominic Julian Messia. Natalia Anna Mysak. Emilio Munoz. Josephine Maria Nalatilic. Kenneth Romello Notorino Jeffrey. Class of 2020, we did it. I want to thank everybody who stood by me this far to see me get this. We just keep growing. Patrick Robert O'Neill, magna cum laude. Gianna Nicole Quaglieri, cum laude. Janice Shade Polite. <laughs> you didn't like that? Oh my God. That will have. Andrew Thomas Rosbach. Cody Michael Rue, magna cum laude. Lauren Lynn Salvioli, cum laude. Kara M. Walker. Leah Grace Walker. Congratulations, Chargers. We made it to the end in a difficult time, and for that, we should all be proud. Special shout out to my friends, families, and professors who helped me get to the finish line. Congrats. Christina Ashley Braid, summa cum laude. Brittany Marie Broberg. Marlon Antonio Campbell. Cameron Rosario Guarino. James Joseph Hayden, cum laude. Brianna M. King, cum laude. Ursula Kirachik. Mary Kathleen McSweeney. Jalen Lee Moore, cum laude. Emily Antonia Morgis. Mackenzie Lynn Plant, cum laude. Rebecca Tamar Serrano. 
Allison May Wolf. Marissa Nicole Aspromonti. Olofunke Mary Benson. Ana Teresa Cardenas Rodriguez. Amanda Separo Ray. Jessica Ann Fiddler. Shandell Sheila Gibbs. Samantha Ann Kent. Jackson Anthony Monarca. Emanuela Nadima Onaikwire A.K. Kevin James Patain Jr. Really excited to be graduating today. Big shout out to my family, my mom, my dad, my sisters, Ashley and Amber, all my friends for all your care, support, and encouraging words. Sienna and Gracia Radigan. Alyssa Sue Robinson. Raquasia Monet Darlene Smith. Aisha Rashed Aldosari. Miriam Mohammed Al Ghatani. And Kida Sharad Chavan. Anju Kadian. Carol Elizabeth Pint. Dania Jamalette Rivera. Barbara M. Rodriguez Munoz. Courtney Lynn Schneeberger. Elizabeth Ann Tomasco. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors, I hereby confer on each of our graduates the degree for which you have been recommended and admit you to the rights, honors, and responsibilities of educated individuals. To symbolize your passage into the community of scholars, graduates, please move the tassel on your mortarboard from right to left. I am pleased to welcome you into the university's alumni association a network of more than 60,000 across the country and around the world that is ready to assist you. I realize this is not the culmination of your educational journey that you envisioned when you first stepped foot onto campus. Your resilience, though, and your achievements are what I will remember when I reflect upon your impact on the university. I hope the trials you faced and resoundingly overcame during the course of the last year did not diminish your excitement for reaching this important milestone. You should take great pride in all you have achieved. On behalf of your professors and the entire university community, I offer my best wishes for continued success. And as always, go Chargers. <laughs>